Good morning, folks. I hope you're doing well. And welcome to this morning's video. So this morning, I have two pairs on watch. And those are euro dollar and pound dollar. And my favorite of the bunch is euro dollar. So on the higher time frames, you can see on the weekly, we broke above this standout area of value for a sell in most cases. Okay, this would be a high area of value for a sell. We break above, catch people on the wrong side of the market, which, as I've said many times, is typically what we do on the higher time frames, where these higher time frame liquidity points are concerned. We broke above, caught people on the wrong side of the market, and then pushed to the downside. And it is currently Thursday, so if this candle closes anywhere anywhere like this or lower by the end of the week, we will have a confirmed evening star formation on the weekly chart, which would mean the sellers would likely be holding this the swing traders would likely be holding this all the way down to these lows or if we just drill down a little bit certainly down to here for example i would be looking to hold this if i was already in it down to these areas there okay and potentially there we'll discuss that in a second but you can see on the daily chart we have we broke above had a full retrace and we've since had confirmation that the market which is to push lower by way of that impulse correction continuation. So what I'm doing is all I'm looking to do is ride the waves, ride the momentum of the bigger players and look for a further correction on the way down and to potentially ride this all the way down to here. Okay, and I'll discuss that in a second. Okay, if we just drill down, we're getting just a touch on it. Yesterday's daily close was a little bit indecisive. We can see we have wicks either side yes it was bearish but we have wicks either side of the body which are about the same size as the body itself so that wouldn't surprise me it wouldn't surprise me if because of this daily close we come back up to the areas that i've got marked as an area of value and an area of interest which i will discuss as we drop down so just factoring in all these things okay we zoom in you can see there that we had the impulse correction continuation we push lower we had this reversal structure which was a clue okay that we were going to break above and catch people on the wrong side of the market a clue for me was this we had a three touch structure which has three drives one two three within that there was other clues with the one two three middle section which breaks just below here okay takes out the liquidity that is there pushes up we also as another clue we had this one two three last leg this was a textbook structure um crystal clear structure for a move to the downside you can even see here okay we had this kind of hanging man we moved down i'm sure some people saw this as a retest to get long they get washed out because they believe that support equals resistance sorry um yeah um is that right support resistance becomes support once it's broken above uh, to get my bearings right there and in the majority of cases, we see, especially after a reversal structure, that that tends not to be the case, which is why we don't trade retests as such. So one of the things I like about this is that we are trading predominantly through this low now. Okay, I did click on that tool. For some reason, it clicked on another tool. Uh, we're trading predominantly below that. The reason that's important is because it implies if price is going to respond from an area it tends to respond from the top and the bottom of a structure okay okay and you can see we have this structure here this is the base of the structure so if we were going to move to the upside then price would usually find liquidity from that the low of the structure or just below and then react aggressively so when it doesn't okay and when it consolidates underneath or predominantly underneath that implies that there was not enough liquidity at the base of this structure to send price to the upside of course anything can happen in trading and you can get consolidation and then suddenly price just rockets to the upside but we're talking about what happens in the majority of cases that the things that happen in the majority of cases are what give us our edge over the market statistically speaking okay so we've consolidated below the base of this structure i like that if we just zoom in a little bit okay first of all you can see that we have moved down slower than we moved up there we had this bullish four hour candle we've moved down slower it took us 12 hours to um three four hour candles so 12 hours to come back down to the base of this 
candle, which took one hour to come back up. So if that's the case, that in itself implies an impulse correction continuation. Now, why would that happen? Well, it would happen if we've missed an area of significance. We near missed it. Okay, yes, we tapped above these highs. Okay, but we if we just zoom in a little bit, you can see that we have this sharp move here. <clears throat> We have this sharp move here, okay, which this high near miss two, okay, and it also happens to be this this sharp move here also happens to be the retest of the back end of that, and of course, if people believe that um, support becomes resistance once it's broken below, many people will now see this uh, this as resistance. <clears throat> Here we go again. So they would likely have their stop losses above there, okay? Which would mean one of the reasons this, uh, if this near missed, then we may get this kind of structure. Okay, we just zoom in. I'm just analyzing this. So we may get this where we do that, for example, come back up, tap into the high that we near missed too. And then, then we have this one, two, three structure like that. We have this. This then becomes the middle section, okay? And then we come back up to there. And if you just look at what's happening at the moment, okay, we just analyze this. What's happening at the moment gives adds fuel to that theory because if you just and separate these structures, okay? So we have this structure here with the hook point. We have the near miss to it. We tap into the area, but we don't we don't continue to the downside. If 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 um if we were going to continue to the downside, usually. If we have a high like that, we near miss to it, we tap into the area. Usually that would be enough. Sometimes we get the scoop double top at the end and then go, but even that wasn't enough. We got the scoop double top and it still didn't commit. So we've gone now from a one piece of structure into another piece of structure. Okay. And that to me adds weight to the idea that price is not finding enough liquidity at these highs to send it to the downside because it keeps tapping them and not, not, uh, committing to the downside, which adds fuel to the theory that we may get, as I said, we may just come straight up from there to tap into the area, or we may push a little bit lower and then push up to complete that structure. Okay. And all these things that I'm factoring in are adding weight to that theory. Okay. So what I'll be looking for with all, all of that in mind is I'll be looking for I'll be looking for price to tap into. Okay, I won't be looking for a risk entry from the top here because, you know, if you're looking at this as a, a three touch, a one, two, three, which taps into that area, then there are multiple ways that you can draw your trend lines. You could have it plotted like that. Okay, so when you've got all these multiple inflection points like that, and, and it, you know, you could technically draw it from any one, I always wait for the push down the flag rather than, you know, if all these inflection points weren't here and we just had a, a straightforward one, two, three, then I would take a, a risk entry. But when there's a subjective first touch, I always wait for a tap into the area, a push down. And then in this instance, I'll be looking for either a um, a five minute or a 15 minute continuation. OK, and then I'll be looking to get short on the break or within it, depending on which one of the two we got, if we actually get them. And I've got an alert set just below the area, area of interest to see if we push up to that area. Okay. And then what I will be doing is I will be, uh, I, will be, I will be able to manage this down to that low for something in the region of three and a half percent, obviously, depending on the size of the stop loss. And then if we just zoom back out, if we just zoom back out, we have, where did this impulsive leg start? It started there. Where did the correction begin? It began there. If we measure that, that would take us down to that area. If we measured it from the break, let's assume we pushed up from here and that this was the break. I'm not sure convinced that that's the case yet, but we shall see. If we measure it from the break, that actually takes us down to that area as well. Okay, which is which logically makes sense because that area there is the base of this structure, this running channel that broke out to the upside. Okay. Uh, we have a sharp move there, implying that there may be liquidity there, especially because it's the base of the structure. And it also happens to be the retest of the back end of all of this volume here. Okay, so that makes sense where 
even if price was going to continue to the downside, that makes se- that area makes sense uh, as being one where price would likely have to build volume if it was going to st- uh, continue pushing lower, if that makes sense. So what I would do is I would measure from the range. Okay, so the range that we were trading within would be there. So where I've got my area of value and then the 90% area where price can often pull back deeply would be there. Okay. It often pulls back to the 50% mark from the 90% mark. That would give us something in the region of uh, 7% to work with. And if we measured that, where does that take us? Yeah, that kind of takes us down to that area as well. So that makes sense. And then I will trail my stop loss accordingly with that take profit set. So that is um, euro dollar. Okay. Uh, Pound dollar is pretty much, as you might imagine, a similar deal. You can see the same sort of thing on this one. I actually prefer the sequence. So if we just look at the, I'm always looking at the position in the sequence and the entry. Okay. So on euro dollar, I actually so if we, I prefer the positioning on this because on on pound, on euro dollar, you can see that we've broken an, above a significant area, okay, a standout area, and then completely capitulated to the downside. On pound dollar, you kind of slightly retest in the back end of this, and we've reacted, we've broken above and pushed below something not as significant, okay. However, um, the sequence is a little bit less typical on pound dollar because we've gone from this kind of larger correction into the smaller corrections, which is not as typical for a move to the downside. Whereas with pound dollar, we've gone straight into a, a tight correction. Into I prefer the sequence on this, but the the positioning is more important to me. Okay, so when I'm considering which ones I prefer, I'm prioritizing positioning over sequence. Of course, we we rarely get perfection, but um, that's the order that I'm doing things. So pound dollar, we have broken above. We have this. It's not the most standout, but it is a sharp move. Okay, we have the sharp move up followed by the sharp move down. We also have an element of an expanding pattern to it. So we have we have this kind of structure there, and we also have this one, two, three last leg. I'm sure as soon as it broke above these highs, people thought it was going to the moon. Many of them wouldn't wouldn't have been paying attention to this because they're too zoomed in. Okay, you then get the 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 FOMOers, okay, where it literally just gets to the area and they start selling immediately because they think it's just going to go from there immediately. You can see there where they get trapped in too early, they get washed out. It breaks above. People think it's going to the moon. They get washed out as well. Okay, and once again. Just as with um, just as with euro dollar, we can see that little that reversal structure here. That one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Middle section. We have the one, two, three last leg. All of this giving adding fuel to the theory that we'll likely completely capitulate to the downside, which is what happened. And if we just zoom out, let's just look at this on the weekly. We've got a similar sort of thing there. You can see break above, push back in, solid weekly close. Okay, we did close slightly above here, which was the slight negative. But you can see that we have had that impulse correction, and I'm just looking for that further continuation. Once again, yesterday, we had an indecisive, a doji, an indecisive daily close, giving me a, a clue that perhaps price might come back up to this area of value as I've got it marked. Okay, I like the fact that once again, we're trading through this low. Uh, and not above it, we're trading partly above it. But when we broke below it, we've broken about uh, below it a couple of times now. I'm not found enough liquidity to come to the upside or to you know to rock it to the upside, suggesting that this is just an impulse correction continuation to push lower. And if we measure this one, and we assume the leg out is of a similar length, look what that takes us. That takes us down to there where I've got my target. Okay, so what I'm looking for in this one is the same as I'm looking for with um, euro dollar. So we have this structure here. So we had that structure there. And the clue that we were going to come back up to there was this near miss. Okay, we near miss to the area. We come back down, come back up again, 
we did kind of tap into it, but we kind of wicked to it. There's another clue. We wicked to it and not through it. And I near missed that area again. And you can see once again that we are falling a little bit more correctively. If we just analyze this, we've come down a little bit more correctively than we moved up. Okay. Some people might be thinking to themselves, okay, well, well technically we tapped into that area. That might be enough to the move to the downside. It might be enough to, to send this to the downside. But the question I ask myself is how much room have I got? To, if I was to look for a trade here, how much room have I got to manage this to this low? And the answer is not a lot because, so if we had a 10 pip stop there, for example, which is the minimum we go to, let's call it 11. Well, you've got one and a half percent, but with my busy schedule, I don't have enough time to be able to get my risk on and off the table. And of course, we also have to factor in, we also have to factor in that price can pull back deeply from the 90% area. So you're looking at this thinking, yep, I can manage it to the low. But if it responds from the 90% area, then you can't because you, you've, you've barely got 1% to work with, especially if we were looking at a 10 pip stop. So I have to factor in things like my schedule, which is very, very busy. So that wouldn't be what I would, would be looking for, what I'd be looking for. And we could get this if we get a little bit of volatility come in. Okay, I'll be looking for... The same thing again, I'll be looking for a, a tap into the area of value, a push down below the area of interest, and then I'll be look, I'd be looking to get short on the break or within a flag, <clears throat> as I've got, a disc, as I've described here. I mean, technically, you could you could take a risk entry here, uh, you know, if we spiked in, into that area, because that would be the retest at the back end of that. But we also have to remember we have this little, I'm not concerned about this, this, this little bump here, but we have a, a little inflection point there as well. So you could in theory be tag, tagged in, tagged out, price pushes up to that and then moves down. The reason I'm not concerned about that little thing there is because if we switch to the line chart, it's not visible. And if you look at it, it just actually looks like an outlier. That that strange candle there, which was, what time of the day was that? It was yeah, it was a swap hours. Uh, that's exactly what I was expecting. Swap hours, ten ten o'clock at night. So that's just a little bit of uh, swap hours volatility by the looks of it. At ten o five p.m. Whoops, it's trying to get me to buy it. Okay, so that is um, so that's what I'm going to be looking for, folks. And then I'll be able to manage it down to the low for four percent. And in this instance, my target would be uh, this low here. I mean, you could target lower, but technically speaking, you know, this low here retested the back end of that. Okay. And it's also, it's also a sharp move and it's the one that stands out to me on the, on the daily chart as well. You can see it there on the daily chart. So that would be where I would anticipate people taking profit even if this was to continue, if we got the entry and it was to continue in the forecasted direction. So that is what I'm going to be looking for today, guys and girls. We shall see this, you know, this may not be ready by the end of the day. It's been a very long time since any of my entries shaped up, but um, I'm not bothered about that. I'm bothered about doing what I've been taught to do. And if what I've been taught to do provides entries, great. If it doesn't, I don't care. I'm absolutely fine. So, have a great day, folks, and I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.